everybody, and welcome to Brain Bunker Broadcast, episode 93. And uh, my wife and I are uh, going through Bible in a year. This, my name is Tim, this is Rachel, and today we are looking through the book of Colossians. It's a, a letter to the people in a place called Colossae, and um, Paul is uh, in prison, and he's trying to combat several things, the wolves of the wolves of legalism and the wolves of vain philosophy were invading the church. And uh, he's sending out letters and emissaries and teachers to try to combat this. So in Colossians, what we have is some summaries. And in uh, chapter one, we have greetings, thanksgiving, and prayer. And then we have Ben Elohim is supreme, the mystery revealed. What is that mystery? Hmm. Chapter 2, we have living out the mystery, a danger of false wisdom, put off the old and put on the new, an orderly mutual relationship, and then chapter 4, devote yourselves to prayer, and then further instructions and greetings. So that is the summaries brought in the, in, in the uh, Tree of Life version of the scriptures. All right, so uh, my observation... I didn't mean to close the book on you. <laughs> uh, so, so, I had... Um, do you want to do the, your observation first? or? Sure. So, mine was, in chapter 4, verses 2 through 6, it's talking about devoting yourself to prayer and keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, keep praying for us as well, that God may open up to us a door for the message to proclaim the mystery of Messiah for which I am in prison. Pray that I make, may make the mystery clear as I ought to speak. Conduct yourselves with wisdom towards outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt to know how you ought to answer everyone. So this hit a couple things with me because as much time as we spend in the Bible, I don't spend enough time praying and um, it's a huge conviction for me. And um, I'm a very task oriented person and I, I would just, I almost should just put it on my list so I can check it off because I don't pray enough. Um, so devoting myself to prayer and then also about your speech always be with grace, season with salt, to know how you ought to answer everyone. And I don't know exactly what that is implying, but what it implies to me is um, that if people ask me questions sometimes about what I believe or the Bible, I don't have the answers usually. I mean, I might have some, but I don't feel confident in my answers. And um, that is a goal something that I'd like to, and I guess through doing this, I mean, obviously we're learning more and more every day, so I'll have more answers. So I would, I would have an answer for everyone, and also that my words would be seasoned with grace. What's grace? God's riches at Christ's expense. Oh. What I've always learned, God's riches at Christ's expense. That's not what it is. No? Okay, yeah. let's hear it. Because there you go, asking me a question again. <laughs> He's going to go in the naughty box. So, <laughs> I'm in the naughty oh, box. God's. So that is what we have always learned, that grace was God's riches at Christ's expense. What would you say grace is? Um, well, grace is loving kindness. Loving. Based on a relationship. All right, so and your turn. It's also a favor. So we're, everybody gets their own definitions, you know, like you know, how to, how come God's, God's riches at Christ's expense isn't right, but your loving kindness based on relationship is right. Because mine is based on languages and context and history and God's riches at Christ's expense is based on a slogan that, be, that belongs on a bumper sticker. Well, what I would say is I would love, like when you're doing some of your milk house stuff, I think you should hit some of these words. Because they are big. And isn't it interesting how that was just like programmed into me? Dot, 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 dot. Yeah. But 
Okay. Gra Grace is, uh, just real quick, um, Grace can be uh, God's riches at Christ's expense is a, is a, a very um, catchy phrase, but does not express what the Bible, how the Bible uses it. So the Bible uses it in um, as merited favor and as to be in good standing with and to be in loving kindness with. So it, it has a lot of meaning. So when, when say, you know, and I'll, I'll edit some of this out, but when he says, have your, have your um, speech be seasoned, he wants it seasoned with loving kindness. So let your speech, Speech always be with loving kindness, having getting seasoned with salt. Which salt is a preservative. So. Well, that was those are really good observations. I don't pray enough, and uh, I don't have all the answers either. You sure about that? I got a lot of them. <laughs> I grind hard, but oh, but I'm just kidding. Let's just have some fun. when you when you talk about the season with speech thing though, that stung me because yesterday I was trying to talk to, with someone on the phone about the gospel of the kingdom, more than just Christ died, but why? Who is Christ? Where did he come from? What's the spirit? What you know? What are we doing? I was trying to explain to him. I was getting frustrated, and he was a street guy from Philadelphia. This is not Ken. This is another man, and. I, I used some weak words in trying to express, uh, you know, because you think you're like man to man, you know, you can get a little flexy, you know, with the words because men's ears aren't so sensitive, especially if you're, you know, of the, you know, especially in construction. He got really offended. I used some weak words with him and he said, uh, he was like, I don't mean to be impolite, but could you please, I think that using a swear word or whatever is a sin. Oh, that's what you're calling a weak word. I was going to ask yeah. you. Well, because profanity and profaneness um, is it's that's a misused term. That's that's like claiming God but having an empty philosophy. That's profane. Yeah, I think profanity takes away from a message. So, like, I don't like it. I get it. I'm not a construction worker, and not all construction workers swear. But um, I just think it takes away. My point was some guys don't even hear the words or think it's like, oh, punctuation, you know, like, oh, emphasis, boom. And another person would hear that word and go, oh my, I can't believe you said that word. Well, I was talking to someone who said, couldn't believe I said that word. And so I, I had to t tone that back. But in general, um, I would like to tone it back anyways. So that's my thing on the weak word deal. So... That's both of our, obs well, that's your observation. I wanted to talk about Colossians 2. Where are we at? Twelve eighteen, but a lot of it is static. What's more important? What? What or what? Time or content? Um, I think trying to cram too much into, too much content in one amount of time isn't beneficial. Yeah, shifting gears to. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna squash this. All right, so. Um, my uh, my observation was in Colossians two, and it had to do with something that I think would muddy the waters of what my wife and I were just talking about being important is having your speech seasoned with salt because you can know all the words like I could be the best guy or hypothetically I could be the best guy or whatever for answering questions but if people aren't going to hear me because my words are not seasoned with salt it doesn't matter what I know if people ain't going to hear it and uh, obviously I don't pray nearly enough I, my prayer my life is falling flat on his face often so It tears my heart out, but I can't talk about Colossians 2 and, uh, right now and keep this into a good time frame. But we'll uh, take a look at it another time, and we hope you guys have a blessed day. And uh, keep your prayer life up, keep your speech seasoned with salt, and stay away from the weak words.
Bye. Bye.